Hello friends, welcome to Rajas Data Engineering. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get output parameter from Databricks uh, notebook while executing the Databricks notebook using ADF activity. In my previous video, I have explained how to pass input parameters while calling Databricks notebook with an ADF environment. In this example, I'm going to cover how to get output parameter as well. In, in order to get output parameter from Databricks uh, notebook, we have to define the logic to return some value to the caller. Let's say we are calling Databricks notebook using Azure Data Factory. In this case, Azure Data Factory is the caller. And when we execute Databricks uh, notebook, at the end of the execution, it should return some value to the caller using this syntax. It starts with dbutils.notebook.exit Within the bracket, we can give the value which we need to pass. Based on the decision, various, pro various other processes can be uh, triggered in the orchestration. So that is the reason this output parameter is important for certain ETL pipelines. And this is one part. Uh, in uh, Databricks, we need to define the output parameter. And coming to Azure Data Factory side, we have to collect the value from the Databricks. For that, we have to use the expression at the rate activity. Then within that, we have to give the activity name we would have created a Databricks activity. So we would have given some name for that activity. That name should be used in this place. Then dot output dot run output. This is the expression. So based on these uh, two code changes, one is in Databricks, another one is in uh, ADF. Based on these code changes, we can uh, receive the output in uh, ADF. So in real time, you know, we will use the output uh, value for various other decisions and based on triggering other processes. But in this simple demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect this output variable into one of the variable in ADF. Hope you understood the requirement. Let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment and cluster is up and running. In this notebook, it is accepting input parameter table. It's going to be same use case which I used in my previous videos. So I think in case you have watched my previous videos, you might be familiar with this use case. In this use case, it is uh, accepting one input parameter table name. Then uh, it is reading the table from Azure SQL database. For that, we need JDBC connection that is defined in this cell. Based on the JDBC connection and the input uh, table name, data frame is getting created. Once data frame is getting created, then we have to write this output into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, we have to create mount point. In case you have already created mount point, you can ignore. In this example, I have already created mount point, so I'm going to ignore. So the next step, uh, the data which I uh, read from um, Azure SQL, that should be written to uh, Azure Data Lake Storage. That is done here. So it is basically creating one folder within the mount point, uh, employee output, and it is appended with current timestamp. I hope you understood the simple uh, exercise. So at the end of this execution, once data is returned to some output location, then I want to pass this output parameter to the caller, in this case, EADF. So the output location will be given back to the EADF. Let's say you know, in this uh, location, the output data is written. So let's say EADF will uh, read the data once again from based on this location, then it will apply some data massage or you know data uh, cleansing operation, removing null, removing duplicate, it could be something. So in this uh, case, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to collect this uh, output variable, output parameter into one of the variable. It's a very simple exercise, but the core concept here is how to uh, send the output parameter from uh, Databricks at the same time, how to collect that output in ADF. I hope you understood this, uh, this notebook in Databricks. Now let me get into uh, Data Factory. In the Data Factory, as usual, in order to create the pipeline, we have to use Databricks activity, uh, which is notebook. So I have already created, with, for that I have given a name, ADB underscore activity. So in order to call Databricks notebook from ADF, first we need to create linked services. I have already created linked services and uh, it is uh, connecting successfully. Once this is done, we have to choose the notebook. I have already chosen the notebook uh, from this uh, settings. which is um, EADF trigger with output parameter. I have already selected and it is accepting one parameter. How I can pass that parameter, sorry, input parameter that is using paste parameter. This is what I explained in my previous video. So we are passing one table name that is dbo.emp. 
Then next step is we have to collect the output from the Databricks. So this activity is responsible to call the Databricks notebook and execute. Once the execution is completed, Databricks will return some output value. So that how we can collect that. For that, we have to use one set variable. This is what I am doing. In the set variable, I am uh, defining one variable that is output location and the expression which I have uh, shown in the PowerPoint. It's the same. I have to use activity. Then within that, I have to give the name of the activity. So my previous activity, it is ADB activity. That is what I am giving. Then dot output dot run output. So what was the run output from the Databricks that is uh, being captured in this set variable? I hope you understood. It's quite simple. Uh, there are only two activities. Now we have set up everything. So coming to my Databricks um, notebook, it is pulling the data from this Azure SQL environment, uh, the table dbo.emp. It is having two columns and one record. And once this is done, then it will write the data into my Azure Data Lake Storage. This is my Data Lake Storage. Within that, I have a container demo. So it is going to create a new folder, employee output underscore appended with uh, current timestamp. I hope you understood the entire uh, architecture and the entire uh, flow. Now, uh, let me execute this uh, notebook, uh, this ADF pipeline so that it will call the uh, Databricks notebook. In order to execute uh, this pipeline, either we can use debug or trigger. Debug, it's mainly suitable for development environment. So here I am going to debug. In case we have to uh, schedule on a particular uh, timing or based on particular event, then we can define a uh, trigger as well. But in this development situation, I'm going with debug. So let me execute. The execution is uh, started. The first activity, ADB activity that is uh, running. Once that is done, the second activity set variable will be executed. Now both activities got completed, which means this Databricks uh, uh, notebook, it is responsible to fetch the data from Azure SQL and write it into Azure Data Lake Storage. So let me go to Data Lake Storage and refresh. I'm able to see the output now it has created one uh, output file in the form of CSV. Right. Coming to the output parameter, my uh, Databricks uh, notebook, it would have uh, sent the output from this cell. Now that is captured in the set variable activity. Let me get into set uh, let me get into output. So this is the second one, this is the first one. It is executing the notebook. Second one, it is collecting the variable output. So let me look at the output here. In order to check the output, this is uh, where we have to click. Let me click on this activity and it is giving the output location. This is the mount point location and on top of that we are creating a new folder dynamically including that folder name it is uh, given as output. This is how we can collect output from Databricks activity. I hope you understood and enjoyed this concept. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in this channel. Also, please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button to get latest updates and development tips in Databricks. Thank you.